From the very outset, Sherry and Garen and their whole family said, you know what? We are going to bring people together and we are going to tackle the issue of mental health and research for mental health, not from a doom and gloom perspective, but from a we can make this happen perspective. And that's really unique. There's something incredibly uplifting about all aspects of the festival. Welcome to the 22nd Music Festival for Brain Health. I'm Brandon Staglin. On behalf of my whole family, I want to tell you how much we appreciate your being here. I am right now a professor and department chair at the University of Minnesota, but I began my career at the University of California, San Francisco. At around that same time, I had met Sherry Staglin, and she was interested in schizophrenia research and wanted to find out more about what we were doing. And as I told her about this project, which was to take the idea of brain training, which is the idea that you can strengthen some of the pathways in the brain by giving them exercises, and that should allow them to start doing what they need to do, which is to process information. She mentioned to me that perhaps her son Brandon might be interested. I have schizophrenia, and I was diagnosed about 20 years ago, and for a few years went through a very dark time based on some of the initial pilot work that was funded by the Staglins, we were able to show that not only were you improving cognition as you measured cognition in, in people with schizophrenia, but you were changing their brain. But I'm happy to say that thanks to family support and medical treatment, I'm, I'm living well now. Well, thank you. <laughs> Those early sets of studies opened up a whole new field of research for us, as well as really supported our ability to obtain major federal funding to grow this work. None of this science could be done without you wonderful donors. Thank you for the science that's bringing us the answers for the treatments and the cures. And also inspired a number of other researchers around the country to take this kind of an approach for psychiatric illnesses and think about how can we harness neuroplasticity through these brain training approaches to improve how the brain is operating, how it's processing information, and lead to improved quality of life for people with these illnesses. There's every reason for optimism. I would predict that over the next few years, we're going to see cognitive training approaches become a third type of treatment that we can offer for people with psychiatric illness. So we have medications, we have the psychotherapies, and pretty soon we're going to have really well-defined cognitive training approaches. We're on the tip of the tidal wave, and this is a real chance to support an endeavor that is trying to think about this tidal wave in a very systematic and very evidence-based kind of a manner.